uh, a former federal prosecutor, uh, but someone who's also been hired to defend a lot of different celebrities. Nima Romani is that former <laughs> prosecutor, and he is joining us right now just to try and figure this out. Nima, welcome to TMZ Live. Thanks for having me. So uh, I think this is the easier part. If you were Alec Baldwin's attorney, what would you have said to him <laughs> when he said, all right, I want to do this interview? Well, I know Alec Baldwin's attorney, Aaron Dyer. I used to work with him, and he's also a former federal prosecutor. I'm sure Aaron told him, don't do it. But the PR and the media teams, they trumped the legal team, and that's why he did it. But from a legal perspective, it was a mistake. Yeah, so uh, that's what we were talking about. Now that they, they've gotten this search warrant, and they've zeroed it in the warrant, they talk about referencing things that he referenced in that interview. So it seems clear to me that prosecutors uh, were watching this, that the, in, the detectives on the case were watching. Um, what is this, how does this play out now for Alec Baldwin, and what, what are the investigators looking at uh, because of that interview? Yeah, we prosecutors love these interviews because they can only provide evidence to help the prosecution. You can never use this to help yourself on the defense side. So what law enforcement is looking for is evidence of knowledge and intent. They want to get inside Alec Baldwin's head because he said he didn't pull the trigger, but he didn't talk about his knowledge that that firearm had previously discharged or that there were live rounds on set or that he had his finger anywhere near the trigger and he pointed that gun at another human being. One of the things that we were talking about is the fact that the, the soundbite where he said, look, I'm, I'm, not, not a, I'm just a creative on this. I didn't hire anybody. How is he trying to protect himself by saying that? Well, we know that he's already being sued civilly, so he's trying to distance himself from folks like Hannah Gutierrez Reed, the Armor, or Dave Halls, right? Those were the folks that, at least according to Alec Baldwin's legal team, are going to bear the responsibility, right? Gutierrez Reed was mm -hmm. supposed to handle the firearm, and Dave Halls was supposed to inspect it before he gave it to Baldwin and said it was a cold gun. So this is I didn't hire them, so you can't uh, you can't put any of this on me. Exactly, just pointing the finger at others, but ultimately he's the executive producer. The buck stops with him, and he's going to be at least civilly responsible. On the criminal side, the government's going to need to show actual knowledge or intent, the state of New Mexico. But, but what about the fact that, I mean, what if Alec, take him at his word, what if what he said is true, that he is not, uh, that he was just a creative on this and that he didn't uh, hire them? So if, as a producer on the film, if he didn't hire them, is he right that he really doesn't bear any responsibility? If investigators ultimately find that they are the ones uh, who are responsible. Well, there's two different claims or cases, right? On the civil side, as an employer, you're civilly responsible, so you could be sued for any negligence of your employees in the course and scope of your employment. So that's not a good argument on the civil side, but on the criminal side, it is. You can't prosecute someone criminally unless they have knowledge or intent or they have gross negligence for manslaughter charges. So. They're going to need a lot more law enforcement than the negligence or misconduct of employees to charge Baldwin in a criminal case. What do you think, now that they have this search warrant to see his cell phone and there's going to be emails about the production, what do you think the prosecutors could find that could sort of help their case or rule out Alec Baldwin uh, after looking at this kind of cell phone? What kind of evidence do you think they'll, they're looking for and might find? Prosecutors are looking for evidence of gross negligence, right? That's what you need for manslaughter charges. So they're going to look for things like, did Baldwin know that this firearm had previously discharged and he used it anyway? Did he know that there were live rounds on set and did he do nothing? And you know, what did he do with respect to this particular gun? He said he didn't pull the trigger, but did he point it at Hutchins? Was his finger near the trigger? So what exactly did he know and what did he do in response? They want to use this opportunity Baldwin's phone to get inside his head. There's one other thing that Alec Baldwin said that I just thought was shocking because it was, um, there was a bravado in it that I felt could blow up in his face. Uh, and there was a part where he said, I, look, I don't feel guilty. I'm, I'm not responsible. I don't know who is, but I know it's not me. So I, yes, I'm sad about Helena's death, but I'm not responsible for it. That's a really black and white statement to say that I have no responsibility in this. How does that land on prosecutors uh, and investigators when they see that? Yeah, that's a terrible statement for Baldwin. And if this case is prosecuted and that goes to a jury, jurors aren't going to like it either. 
you killed another human being. You have some responsibility. So to tell folks that you have none whatsoever, I don't think that's going to fly if this case goes to jury. All right. Well, uh, we will see what happens. And of course, look, as we said, they are investigating the DA there in Santa Fe County. You said she's not ruling out anyone, but she's not saying that Alec Baldwin is going to be charged. We don't know. And we'll, we will be watching. Uh, Nima, thank you so much for being with us. And um, I, I think we might be talking to you again about this case. Thanks for having me.